All right. Hey, what's up, guys? And we start with a pop quiz. That's right. It's on. It's on. It's on. Check this out. Check this out. How long is this soccer field diagram? Check it out. What's your answer? What's your answer? Come up with it now. We're running out of time. Pop quiz. Well, we got some numbers in front of us. What do we have here? 18 yards, 64 yards, 18 yards. Did you figure it out yet? Did you figure it out yet? Your pop quiz. You didn't think you'd be walking into a brand new lesson and getting a pop quiz. Normally, I give this question for homework. Can I see if you get it right? Did you get it right? Let's check it out here. Wait a second. Okay. How long is this soccer field diagram? 18 yards, 64 yards, 18 yards. I'm thinking, why am I being asked this? It's got to be 100, right? 100. Wait, hold on a second. Soccer field. How long? Well, this is the length of the field, right? How long is this soccer field? Wait, diagram? Wait, di this diagram is not 100 yards long. What is being talked about here? What is this? Wait, I, I, I got to break this out, right? Let's, let's go ahead and break this out right now. Because look at this diagram. Look in front of you. You're probably watching this on your, I don't know, your, your, your uh, iPhone 10 or something or your Samsung Galaxy or whatever. It's tiny, right? It's, it's not big. Like or you're looking on a Chromebook, right? Perhaps here. So that's not a hundred yards. Are you kidding me? That's not a hundred yards. So let's check this out. Let's see what let's see what exactly this is right now. Because this is this the stocker field diagram is not a hundred, right? You're wrong about that. You're wrong about here, that here. I got all right, four and a half inches. There we go. Four and a half inches. If you said four and a half inches, you're probably right, or probably pretty close if you said five inches, six inches. Okay, so what am I getting at here? This is not a soccer field, right? We're not looking at a soccer field. What we're looking at is a diagram of a soccer field, of course. So the principle we'll be dealing with today is we have diagrams of things that represent other things that are larger. What is that, right? What, what is that all about? Like, how does that help us? Because that helps us geometrically make conclusions about things called similar polygons, okay? So we would say that this diagram of a soccer field, which was only 4.5 inches, in the length of the field, right? It's kind of like width in the diagram here, but 4.5 inches. In fact, it even got smaller on my screen, right? As the animation made it even smaller. Um, this diagram of a soccer field is a similar figure to an actual soccer field. So that's what lesson this lesson today is about. So welcome to your lesson today. Um, this is what we're going to learn about. We're going to learn about the criteria in order for one figure to be similar to another figure. And we're going to learn things that we're going to need to apply. It's going to involve proportions like we've been dealing with the last few days and really analyzing stuff here. So if you're looking at this screen right now, I got a real soccer field in here. And this again is just a diagram, right? That's just a diagram there as well. Um, and we have a diagram up top. So um, here, right? Let's just say that this is actually the four and a half inches one. No, this isn't 100 yards, right? Not 100 yards right here. Okay, a real a real soccer field right? Real soccer field. How is it different than the actual diagram? Let's just pretend this is a real soccer field. Let's we're looking at a real soccer field here. Well, um, instead of being, you know, 4.5 inches, because I got this, 4.5 inches for the length of the field, right? From one goal to the next goal, it's 4.5 inches. That's the diagram here. A real soccer field, of course, it would be 100 yards as we see there. Oops, not 1,000 yards, 100 yards as we saw kind of in what gets labeled on a diagram here. So there's kind of this idea that, right, we want to talk about a soccer field. We don't have enough space. We can't actually fit, like, on our computer screens, a whole 100 yards football field. So what we're going to do is to make that soccer field to scale, right? Scale it down, sort of scale it down. You've probably heard that before. So we're going to talk about that today. We're talking about something called scale factor and um, what these things don't have in common, right? The diagram versus the real thing is these are, of course, right? Different, okay? These are, of course, different, different lengths, right? Different lengths here. But it's going to connect to, like, for instance, how tall this is here, right? How wide the soccer field is in the diagram versus how wide a real soccer field is. We don't need to look at that now. Um, what about the angles? Let's look at, let's talk about maybe how they're the same, the diagram versus the actual real thing. The angles? Well, the angles are all, what kind of angles? Well, they're all like a soccer field's a quadrilateral, so it's got to be 360 degrees worth of angles. Uh, oh, yeah, all these are congruent. So, yeah, these are all 90 degree angles. Okay, so the diagram itself, Angles are going to be the same, right? Angles are going to be the same. So this leads into what we're going to find next, which is something called similar polygons. Definition of similar right here. So get this down in your notebook. Get your notebooks going. Jot this down. Write it down as quickly as possible because uh, we've talked a lot about congruency so far this year. Uh, that's sort of the big thing, right? It's always how you start geometry. Talk about 
figures being the same as other figures because you can prove a lot of things about figures if we can just prove that there's a lot of congruent triangles in a particular shape. Uh, we're going to start proving things when we know that triangles are similar to one another or when shapes are similar to one another. So you're getting that sort of the beginning of this chapter of, of, of uh, chapter five, uh, similar polygons with the definition, right? Definition of similarity here. When you see in your book here, you see it kind of bolded out. That means it's giving you a definition. So this is an important definition, definition of similar. I'd write that in your notes, definition of similar. Um, two polygons are similar if their vertices can be paired such that one, their corresponding angles are congruent, Okay, so I had the, the diagram, which is 4.5 inches in, in length. Um, all the angles were 90 degree angles. So, right, they, they all correspond to a real soccer field where they, all angles are 90 degrees. Okay, so, um, you know, this will be for, for angles that are not necessarily 90, right, all the way around. Not all angles have to be congruent, but from one triangle to the next triangle or from one polygon to another polygon, all the corresponding angles would have to be congruent. Um, second criteria for similar polygons here. Okay, so I'm just talking a bit here, buying you some time because you definitely should be putting this note. Definition of similar polygons. Vertices compared such that corresponding angles are congruent. And secondly, corresponding sides are in, that big word, proportion right? Proportion. That's why we've been working with proportions so much the past week or so. Uh, the lengths have the same ratio, okay? The lengths have the same ratio. So looking back at kind of what we had earlier here, right? This would be in a, oops, I'll we'll get to this a little bit later here, um, but this would be in a, you know, 4.5 inch to 100 yard ratio. I'd have to change that 100 yards to inches. That's what, 3,600 inches, right? I have to multiply 100 by 36. So that would be in a 4.5 to 3,600 ratio. But that side too, right? That side too would also, right? This would also be in a 4.5 to 3,600 ratio. Um, and so I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but uh, I'm just getting excited, right? That similar polygon is pretty cool. We're going to have this idea of ratio going from one figure to the next figure here. One other thing that I want to point out that you see on the screen here that I haven't actually explained yet is that like congruency, right? Remember I said the first few chapters, we spent a lot of time on congruency. Now we're talking about similarity. Like congruency, similarity gets its own symbol. It gets a shape here, right? Or it doesn't get a shape. Sorry, it gets a symbol. Okay, so put this in your notes. This means similar right? This, this symbol here means similar. Similarity like congruency gets its own symbol. So little squiggly mark, right? Which might look familiar, right? It might look familiar. And I'll talk about this a little bit later on in the lesson here. So this little squiggle, right? It's called a tilde on your computer. I think uh, your buttons, the button on your computer is right next to your one button. Hit shift and then uh, you, you get that. So you actually type this into your computer. Uh, I think it's the tilde symbol, uh, but it, it means is similar to. So it's a way of forming a math sentence in uh, geometry, just like a, a statement of congruency would be a math sentence. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, right? That's a math sentence. That's a sentence I just said out loud. Is congruent to, is similar to, right? Works as a math sentence too, such as this math sentence right here. Quadrilateral ABCD is similar to quadrilateral A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. I want to point this out because your, your textbook's going to start doing this and they're not going to explain um, wow, what they're writing down here. But uh, this actually, this, this, this here is something called a, um, what is it called? Prime. Oh, it's <laughs> when, you, when you read this, you say the word prime out loud. Okay. Word prime out loud. So it's just a way of kind of like, of indicating... I haven't shown it. Maybe I should draw the figures here. So let's let's let's, let's just see what this might look like here. Try uh, quadrilateral A B C D. So maybe you do like kind of a funky one, one that's like nothing really that special, not a trapezoid. Oops, there's a vertex here, a vertex here, a vertex here, and a vertex here. So roughly, and I didn't draw straight sides super straight here. So we'll go A B C D. Okay, so it's not a trapezoid, not a not a parallelogram because I don't want to do anything special right here. Um, but I want to show, right, this 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 figure would be similar to a figure uh, perhaps like this where the angles, okay, so corresponding angles are going to have to be congruent. I'm just going to kind of draw another shape here that would be similar to. So um, I'm going to draw point, this would be called point A prime right here, okay? I'm going to pair this vertex with this vertex here. So I'm going to create kind of like a, looks like a hundred degree angle right there or so. Um, but you know what? I'm going to make my sides bigger. I'm going to make my sides bigger over here, but in proportion, 
right? In proportion, having the same ratio. So maybe I'll take this, I'll draw this maybe about one and a half times. I'm just trying to eyeball it. See if I can kind of draw a similar figure so you can kind of see what it looks like in a second. Okay, so I went about one and a half times down here. Um, and then this would be B prime, right? B prime down here. A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Um, your book's gonna start doing this because in geometry you see this, that you have one shape. You wanna compare it to kind of a similar shape or something that's very related to the original one, they might just be like, okay, we'll just create this new shape where we'll kind of label the vertices with the same letters, but we'll have this uh, this sort of prime symbol to say that, um, you know, it's still different, right? Different than this original A point. Right? It's kind of confusing, but it's just like, instead of having this be quadrilateral ABCD is similar to quadrilateral E, F, G, H, right? Uh, they just wanted, this is just another way of naming points, right? Just going A prime. Okay, so this is sort of like, uh, something like a vertex that's related to the original A. Uh, this is a vertex that's going to be related to the original B, but it's different shape, right? It's a different shape here. Okay, so anyways, you'll just start seeing in the textbook, and I think it'll make sense, right? You don't really worry about it here. It's just sort of like, well, we want to draw one quadrilateral, and we want to draw a similar quadrilateral where we're going to tell that these points are going to match up to that one here. Okay, so anyways, I'm just going to keep drawing here. So I'm going to go one and a half times. So every, right, every length of this one here, right? So say if this was length one, this is 1.5, okay? If this were length three, then I gotta go 4.5 this way, right? Because three times 1.5 is 4.5. So I'll go a little further here, right? Length 4.5. Here's C prime, okay? And then let's say that this is length uh, 1.5 here. Oh, it's about half of that, 50% longer than that. So it could be 2.25 this way. Um, but notice here, as I'm doing this in, and I'm doing, oops, a little too far. Yeah, it's fine there. Uh, 2.25, and then this is D prime, okay? Um, and, you know, that looks like maybe 2 to 4. Uh, wait, no, that's 2 to 4, 2 to 3. All right, let's put it, let's put it that way here. Um, okay, so this could be just kind of like a quick example of this here, okay? So again, corresponding angles are congruent. So if I know that I have two similar figures, corresponding angles are congruent to one another. Those are congruent. If you're just like eyeballing it here, if you're sketching this out, right? Sketching it out with me, quadrilateral A, B, C, D, similar to quadrilateral A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Uh, yeah, you maybe you're just like noticing it here. Like, whoa, that's like a, what, a 110 degree angle or so. And it's in both of them. Look, these, 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 these shapes look a lot alike, right? A lot, a lot alike. So I've been telling you to you guys the past week or so, is like, we're going to go into similar figures. Um, similar figures, as you can tell here, this figure is similar to that figure. Look at the shapes. Like, look at the shapes, right? The shapes, they're both quadrilaterals. They both look like, kind of the same shape, but they're different sizes, okay, different sizes. So that's a lot of uh, the way that a lot of people will describe, um, oops, <laughs> describe kind of uh, what similar polygons are like, two, three, four tick marks, okay, is that the angles, corresponding angles are congruent. That's like, if I have these angles and they correspond with one another, right, D corresponds with D, D prime and, and they're congruent to one another, and that's true for all the other correspondences that happen between the, the vertices here, um, then your figure is going to have the same shape, right, the same shape, okay? Corresponding sides in proportion, as long as that proportion, as long as the ratio, right, as long as the ratio is not one to one, right, not one to one, we'll talk about that in a second. It's okay if it is one to one, actually, it's totally similar. Um, but as long as it's not one per uh, uh, one to one, uh, it's likely it's going to have, it would have the same shape, but, you know, likely different size, right, different size. Okay, so similar, that's sort of the difference between uh, congruent and similar is that similar figures are going to have the same shape, different size. Congruent figures are going to have the, uh, uh, the same shape in the exact same size, right? Exact same size. So we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Um, all right. If we knew that, uh, that qua, let's see, Pentagon PQRST is similar to Q VW XYZ, uh, what would this allow us to deduce and approve by reason of definition of similar? Okay. So you just wrote the definition of similar down in your notebooks. So and I trust you to that, right? Corresponding is congruent. <laughs> corresponding sides are in proportion, right? A little, you guys wrote it down. You're just like, move on, man, move on. Um, so definition similar, similar. Okay, so like if we have this as our diagram, I want to make sure you know how to how to do this. Okay, so if I gotta uh, if I gotta actually like do this here and say it's given to me that Pentagon PQRST is similar to VW XYZ in a proof, um, things will follow from that, right? From the the definition you wrote down. How can I use it? How can I use it tactful tactile? <laughs> Tactfully, no, tactically, to jump to 
some conclusions I can make, right? Given this figure is congruent to that figure, what am I going to know? Uh, well, remember, all angles are congruent, okay? So I can make any of these statements here. Look, angle P is congruent to angle V. Angle Q is congruent to angle W because they're corresponding, right? The corresponding vertices are going to align with corresponding angles that are congruent, right? That are congruent to one another. So I can conclude that. What's the other thing that I'm able to conclude? Okay. So in congruency, you can say all corresponding parts are congruent. In this, in similarity, we can say all corresponding angles are congruent, but what can we say about the sides? This is a little bit different. Well, we can say that PQ to VW Right. Well, that's like a 20 to 32, and they're both divisible by four, aren't they? Are they both divisible by four, right? Got to know the multiplication tables here. Uh, so this is in a five to eight ratio. That's cool. But we're going to know what? We're going to know that all other side corresponding side lengths are going to be in that same ratio. Okay. So check it out here. This might look a little confusing here, but if you, if you, if you check this out, if you sort of double check my logic right here, let me get rid of this out because this is a definition of similar right here. Um, and move myself up, maybe right on this a little bit here. Oops. Um, but definition of similar is going to allow us to, right, determine that we have six pairs Okay, because this is a, uh, well, it should be five pairs because this is a pentagon, not a, not a hexagon. Five pairs of congruent angles for PQRST, VW, uh, XYZ. And remember, the, 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 the pairing matters. The way that this gets written out matters. P's got to be congruent to P. It can't be congruent to X and not to V, right? Sorry, P's congruent to V. Um, okay, five pairs of congruent angles. Um, and we're also going to know that we have five ratios, okay? five equal ratios, okay, between corresponding sides, okay, corresponding sides here, okay? And how do we get that? How do we determine those ratios? Well, if we check it out here, right, PQ and VW, right, they match up. They're in corresponding places, right? And we see here 20 to 32 would be your ratio, right? PQ to VW, okay, which we're, what's given to us is actually, you know, 20 over 32, um, that's in that ratio by, by given, right? And that simplifies, right? That's divisible by four, that's divisible by four, right? So that's in a five to eight ratio. Um, and we're also going to know that QR to WX, right? QR to WX, right? That makes sense here. They're in the corresponding places. But, but the thing you want to get good at is that, well, this is how we're writing the correspondence down. These correspond QR to WX is another... Um, ratio that's equal to five to eight right five to eight is that five and is that eight no not necessarily it might be 10 and 16 right but it's going to be in that five to eight ratio if we knew one of them right we'd be able to solve for it using that uh five to eight ratio we'd be able to solve for it like if this is 10 that's got to be 18 sorry that's got to be 16 if that's 10 that's got to be 16 because five times two is 10 and eight times two is 16 um anyways keeping going on right rs and xy rs and xy i'm just kind of like showing this to you here and kind of kind of getting it right it's just the conclusion is that all these things right st to uh yz also give me that five to eight ratio finally last one's the hard one is that the tp right we got there tp uh to zv right so not zz zv right zv right the, the last two first and last uh vertices, vertices would form would, would, would come together to form a segment okay so we have a segment to add zv and to tp would, would be in the same ratio the, the inverse of that um all right anyways let's just keep going here let's keep going because i want to compare this a little bit here too because you probably wondered like i have i seen that symbol for tilde within math because you have you have let's check this one out here compare similarity to a congruency relationship so just want to point that out right if you're given a pentagon pqrst that's similar to this this is the conclusion you can jump out a jump to right corresponding angles and congruence corresponding sides are in proportion okay so this is the mathematical statement you're going to make for the corresponding sides being proportion don't forget that i mean that's you're setting up equal ratios right equal ratios between the sides and you'll get practice on that in the exit ticket tomorrow's problem set so um here this is uh, 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 uh what if you were uh, instead of giving this as similar uh, just compared to what you could deduce in a proof if you knew that was congruent to that well of course angles are congruent Okay, right. That's the thing that's gonna that's gonna keep going at the top here, right? Angles are congruent, and then sides are equal to one another, right? Equal to one another in in a congruency thing. So these are not very much different, right? Not very much different than what you've done so far this year. Okay, 
if you know two, uh, uh, two triangles or two polygons that are similar to one another, congruence angles will follow from that and sides in proportion versus just the side lengths being the same. Okay. But quick question actually, are congruence, like congruent figures, are they similar to one another? Let's see here. Well, congruent figures, you'd have the, the angles would all be congruent to one another, corresponding angles. What about the corresponding sides? P, if PQ equals VW, oh, wait, we have PQ over VW right here. If QR equal WX, QR over WX are similar. RS equals XY, RS over XY for the definition of similar, and they're all equal to one another. Well, what if PQ equal VW? What would PQ over VW equal? What would QR over WX equal uh, if QR equals WX? What would RS over XY equal if RS equaled XY? They'd all equal one, right? They'd all equal one. They'd actually all equal the same ratio, okay? So it turns out that congruency, right? Congruency, two congruent figures are also similar to each other. That actually falls out. Congruent figures also are similar. So you kind of think about this earlier on in the year, I did that thing called supersets and subsets within that one lesson for you. The superset is like, you know, includes a lot of things here. So similar, right? Similar figures is kind of like a superset here. You can be similar to one another. And within similar figures, you have fi figures that are different sizes, so they wouldn't be congruent to one another. And then within similar figures, you'd have similar figures that were the exact same sizes, and those would be congruent figures to one another. So anyways, just wanted to point this out here because that new symbol you're getting is familiar here. Congruency, you get similarity for free. Look at this. This this, this congruent symbol is actually pretty interesting once we back look at it. And you've been looking at it all year, be like, well, I got the equal sign and I got this little freaking tilde on top of that. Where does that come from? That tilde actually that you that, that, that's in the congruency symbol comes from this whole similarity thing that you're learning about today. So that's it, right? What congruency really means is you have they have sides that have an equal ratio with one another, right? We have sides that equal each other within similar figures. Those figures would be congruent to one another. All right, so let's look at this in the context of uh, of this here, right? So polygon PQRST is congruent to polygon uh, VW XYZ. Are they similar? Sure they are. Their angles are all congruent. The side lengths are all equal to one another, right? Because it's congruent here. Uh, so they'd be in a one-to-one -one ratio here. So just want to point that out. Congruent just means now, right? It means similar. Uh, with equal side lengths, right? And uh, we can think of that. Congruency is composed of that. Okay. Last thing in today's lesson, I know I've kind of gone off here because it's kind of like a new one, right? We did congruency for so long. Now we got similarity. So I wanted to make sure you wrote down in detail what uh, the definition of similar was and some things to look out for here. Another thing we're going to look out for here in this section is something called scale factor. Okay. So if I have two figures that are the exact same shape, but they're just different sizes, that means that the, the side lengths are going to have to be in proportion to one another. And there's going to have to be a kind of a scale factor from one figure to the other figure. And it could be from the smaller figure to the larger figure or larger figure to the smaller figure. Okay, so let's maybe like, let's maybe look at an example and kind of talk about this. Maybe look at the definition. Okay, new definition for you to write down. Let's write it down. Let's write it down. We got about 23 minutes right now. This hasn't been too bad here. We'll wrap it up pretty soon here. Okay, so definition, the ratio of the lengths of two corresponding sides of similar figures is called the scale factor between those figures, okay? So remember, if you're two similar figures, your side lengths, corresponding side lengths are gonna be in proportion with one another. All the ratios of sides, right, to the, of the corresponding sides, all ratios will be equal to one another, okay? So to figure out a scale factor from one figure, one similar figure to, a, to its similar figure, right, one figure to another, you would just need to take two of those corresponding sides, and figure out that ratio, right? The ratio of lengths from, because the ratios are all the same, right? Between all the corresponding sides. So just take two of the sides, right? The two that court, the one pair, right? One pair, find the ratio, and that's just called the scale factor, okay? And that'll be true for any corresponding sides that are in the two figures, okay? I don't know if this is making make sense. We'll see, we'll see in a second, we do some examples. The ratio of lengths of two corresponding sides of similar figures is called the scale factor between those figures, okay? Scale factor is usually represented by the variable K, okay? So you're gonna be doing multiplying for sure in the homework tonight and tomorrow because if you have one figure, right? You, you know one figure, uh, one figure's one side length and you wanna get like its corresponding side length in the other similar figure, you could just multiply by the scale factor, 
right? Multiply by K, right? By K. So anyways, I just want to point this out here. I don't know if your book even really does this, but um, oftentimes this variable K in math, and it'll come up like K, K gets assigned to the scale factor, right? K, K stands for constant, actually, like a constant scale, scale factor, uh, not C, right? Constant usually starts with C. Uh, constant starts with K in German. So actually, that's why they, they use K as a variable. It's a constant you can multiply to one side of a figure to figure out what its corresponding side is in the other similar figure here. Okay, so anyways, just think about this for a second here. K represents a scale factor between two figures. So for example, we have this one. Let's maybe talk about this one again here, where um, if we're talking about this diagram, right, which is, again, uh, let's put this in here. Like, let's try to get the scale factor between the length of a real soccer field. So your, your question needs to be clear here is about whether the scale factor is going to be from the larger to the smaller or smaller to the larger. So let's just say here, let's figure out the scale factor from the, of the length of a real, right? From a, a real soccer field to a diagram, this diagram down here, which again, I said was 4.5 inches in like, like the length of the fields or width of what we're seeing here. I don't know, this whole thing's just crazy here. So anyways, um, scale factor, okay, what would be the scale factor between two similar figures, right? One being a real soccer field and this diagram here. Well, um, in order to do it, you would just need to link up, okay? So this is sort of telling us about what a real soccer field is, which is going to be, um, this one, no, not went too far, which is going to be, let me move me out of the way so I can write this down. Uh, pen, a real soccer field would be 100, right? The length would be 100, 100 yards, um, or that would be 3,600 inches, right? 3,600 inches, right? That would be the that would be the length here, right? 100 yards for the soccer field, and then we would multiply by, right, 36 inches per yard, okay? Yards would cancel, right? That's 3,600 inches, Okay, what was the diagram again, right? The diagram here is we're trying to represent that 100 yards in this 4.5 inch width here. It's the length of the field, right? Confusing, confusing words here. And so we have 4.5 inches here to 4.5 inches. So the scale factor, right? This, 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 this diagram here is scaled downward by a whole bunch. Okay, so if I do 3,600, let me go to my calculator real quick. Calculator, calculator. All right, just bear with me for a second here. 3,600, you've been bearing with me all year, uh, divided by 4.5 and 800. Look at that. So it's an 800 to 1 ratio. Um, or the scale factor, right, is 800. It's 800 times bigger, okay? So we've managed to create a tiny, tiny freaking football field down here. Um, and the scale factor K would be 800, right? Inches cancel out right here. It doesn't matter if it's inches or yards or anything like that. As long as you're using the same inches, you can figure it out. So that would mean that if I measured this, and I might do this right now to see if it's, uh, it's actually right. If I measure this, and this is... Uh, I don't know, it looks like a little less than two inches or so here, two inches, I would multiply this by 800 to figure out what the width of a real soccer field is, right? If it's actually similar, you know, if I actually measure the 4.5, right? And anyways, uh, that's sort of the idea of scale factors. If you have it, you can just multiply one figure to the other. So anyways, just looking at this one here, how do I figure out this, the scale factor between triangle PRQ and triangle SUT? Let's take a look at it for a second. How do we do it? Well, how many sides do I need to look at? I just need to look at two sides. I need to look at a pair of sides to get this, okay? So I'm just going to look at this. If I'm trying to get the scale factor, I can look at any of these here. So I can look to this, right? UT and RQ correspond with one another. Look at that, RQ, UT. Look, they're the last two here. So my answer here is 6 over 9, okay, which equals 2 over 3, right? I, don't, I still want to simplify that, okay? That's, that's, that's what K is going to equal. Right, this one case equal. So that means if I have anything here, if I take 15 and I multiply it by two thirds, I get the 10 there, right? I get 15 times two is 30 divided by three is 10, right? Um, so my scale factor between this and that, you just take this, right? We got to find anything, right? Any side in PRQ over its corresponding side in SRT, SUT. Uh, length and then that's going to tell you the scale factor okay so that's just a real quick oral practice what about this one here I just, I just shout out in class somebody tell me this somebody wake up and tell me this here find the lengths b and d given um b and d given triangle abc similar to triangle def okay well maybe we'll figure out the scale factor of this here well uh scale factor this would be 18 over 24 
Okay, so k equals 18 over 24. That's going to simplify, right? Those are both divisible by 6. So uh, this is going to be 3 over 4. So we're in a 3 to 4 ratio here, okay? So this can help you out because if I want to get this b, for instance, I can just multiply that by 20, right? This, this here is what k is, 3 over 4. So I can take 20, and if I multiply it by 3 over 4, okay, that's going to tell me what b is going to equal. Okay, right? B equals what this 20 is, and this is in a 3 to 4 ratio, right? That's our scale factor. 20 times 3 over 4, so that's 60 over 4, that's 15. Okay, and I got 15 right here. Um, okay, and uh, what if I wanted to get my scale factor this to that, right? This to that, um, that would be 4 over 3, right? 4 over 3 here, okay? 24 over, eight, uh, sorry, 24 over 18 uh, is 4 over 3. So if I want to get the D, for instance, here, okay, this is going to be 4 over third times larger right than the smaller one here okay because we're just we're getting at here scale factor is a way of telling you like how much times larger one thing is than the other or what fraction of the size right this little guy is of the bigger guy here and it's three-fourths the size three-fourths the size this is four-thirds the size right here so what i need to do to get d which is over here so if i were to get d over here i need to take the nine right because bc corresponds to ef here in the similarity statement so D is 9 times by 4 over 3, right? So the scale factor large to small is just the reciprocal of the scale factor small to large, right? 3 fourths here. So 9 times 4 is 36 divided by 3 is 12, right? There we go. We got our answer right there. We got 12. Um, of course, we could have just solved this by setting up um, equal ratios, right? You could have done it that way too. Like you could have just... Well, I'm actually going to do it the old-fashioned way, which is just I know that if it's similar, right, then a, a figure, I would know that AB to uh, DE uh, would be in the same ratio as uh, BC over uh, EF. Okay, but I feel like this is more slow than just figuring out the sales, the scale factor and multiplying. Okay, you don't want to spend as much time doing this here. Okay, but you could have done it this here, right? And AB is 18 over uh, 24. And uh, BC is nine, and D, D EF is our unknown. That's D we wanted to solve. So you could have done this and then cross multiply, but like this is a big thing, right? You want to simplify that to three fours. I don't know, eighteen D times by twenty four times nine. I mean, it's just just mess here. It's just a lot more math to be done here. A lot more multiplying. Twenty four times nine. That's kind of hard to do in your head very quickly. Divided by eighteen. Anyways, uh, you could have done it this way, right? Setting up equal ratios, right? 18 to 24 would be the same as 9 to nine over D and then solving, but uh, the scale factor way is definitely faster. So maybe we'll get to some examples a little bit later, okay? So just wanted to point that out. There's a scale factor that exists from one similar figure to its other similar figure, okay? So uh, the thing you need to be careful of is like, well, what to what, okay? So the scale factor um, going from large length to smaller length, um, you know, uh, if they're saying what's the scale factor between this and that, then you're going to say larger to small, or what's the scale factor from this to that, you would say smaller to large. So they would actually be opposites of one another, okay? So in this one here, um, the scale factor in terms of going from large to small, right, would be 15 over 10, okay? And then that equals, right, that's going to simplify down, right? Centimeters cancel, you know, so units don't matter. Uh, this would just be 1 over 1.5 or 2 two thirds, actually. Okay, so, but if we're going larger to smaller, this would have been 15 over 10, so this would have been 3 over 2, okay? So um, the scale factor going from small to large versus large to small are just reciprocals of one another, right? In fact, fractions kind of flipped here. All right, summary, okay? Write everything down. There wasn't a ton in this section. I just kind of got excited. We're doing similar figures. I have to go off, you know? I mean, if I can't enjoy this, who's going to enjoy this stuff this year? Anyways, uh, that's what I get paid to do. Um, so let's check it out here. We got a summary of this. Did you Write down the full definition of similarity. Know it. Love it. Put it on a note card. Put it on a freaking note card, okay? All corresponding angles are congruent, and all corresponding sides are... What's the word? Proportional. Proportion and proportion. They have the same ratio, okay? Know it. Love it. Practice it. Um, okay, do you understand that congruent figures are also similar to one another? Yeah. Congruent figures are similar figures because all the angles are congruent and all the all the sides are equal to one another. So they're the sides are in proportion, right? They're in a one to one ratio. Okay, so that's something that I figured I'd point out to you, and uh, it might be useful to you coming up here.
the future. Uh, finally, number three, do you understand that there's a scale factor between two similar figures, right? There's a large to, to, to small scale factor and a small to large scale factor that can help you jam through some problems, okay? So the, these three things, make sure you know them. That's the summary of the section. Um, hey, we got some practice here too. You don't have to keep watching this video if you don't want to. We have the exit ticket coming up a little bit later, but we might as well do some practice so that at least I have this here for you guys, okay? So why, actually, why don't I stop this video? I'll stop it now. We'll go into practice in the next video. Oh, oh, oh.